Hello, everybody, and indeed, welcome to another edition of Hoosier Hometown Heroes. I'm Tony Val, and today it is my great pleasure to have with me my business partner, my dear friend, the president of Prometheus Consulting, Denver Abernathy. Please enjoy my conversation with Denver. Hoosier Hometown Heroes is sponsored by Prometheus Consulting. Prometheus is Indy's most trusted name in outsourced IT support. Denver, welcome to the show. Hi, Tony. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem. I feel like it's forever since we've talked, right? Probably probably an hour ago, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Yes, yes. So welcome to the show, Denver. What I wanted to do, okay, we had the uh, Prometheus Consulting holiday party not too long ago. And for those who don't know, right, Denver and I are, are the two partners in Prometheus. Probably everyone watching this knows this, but just in case you don't. And... What I noticed at our holiday party, Denver, is we did what so often happens when we get together, especially when you and I get together kind of with, uh, in a setting where all of our staff are together, we start to reminisce. And, and you love to reminisce. And I thought it would be fun to kind of take a little bit of a trip down memory lane and think about the old times. Now we've we said in the at the holiday party, you're so much better at keeping track of this stuff than I am. But we the Prometheus 25 year is coming up. Yes, but you notice at the last party, I there were entire uh, years that I seem to have lost. So so let's. <laughs> set I don't. <laughs> I don't begrudge you that. I can't remember <laughs> what I had for lunch yesterday. So right. Uh, but at any rate, we're coming up on 25 years, which blows my mind. It's um, crazy. It is crazy. And I, I thought it would be fun to start with just to reminisce with you about a story that I remember from long, long ago. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name client names, but I think you'll know who I'm talking about. There was we got a call years and years and years ago, back in the early days when we had way more hair. We got a call from an organization down on Founders Road who said they were not a client of ours and their server died. I think it was on a weekend. You probably already know who I'm talking about. Their server died. So. Yeah, their server died and their their IT guy was on vacation somewhere and wasn't returning calls or something, was just totally out of the loop. I think he, yeah, I think he had left. He he was a contract IT um, specialist, and he simply quit. <laughs> so oh, he literally quit. Yeah. Okay, I didn't. <laughs> my recollection was that he was out of town, but they couldn't reach him, and they were desperate. And mm -hmm. through 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 a friend of a friend type deal, they they realized, hey, we know Denver. Denver's a, a Cracker Jack IT guy. So we we were invited into this situation. And for people who don't know, uh, it, it's an incredibly difficult situation to walk into a dead server where you don't even have the login information, right? We didn't that's, even have that, did we? That's right. We were able to gather some of it. But if I remember right, uh, this... Uh, IT guy who was kind of a part-time IT guy, I think, um, he had installed all kinds of freeware applications on this server that were getting in the way from it booting up, and and we just had a heck of a time because we had we had no starting point. Um, it was the middle of the night, and they were they were going to be coming in in a few hours, hoping to be work as usual. <laughs> Uh, that yeah. was that was a nightmare, but we got through it. Yeah, I love how you say we. We had trouble. I was doing nothing. I was simply there <laughs> for moral support. This whole thing rested on on your skills. Yeah. And I remember sitting there. It was a unique situation for me because um, I got to sit there knowing that. Well, hey, you know what, Ser uh, servers, it's just not my bag. That's that's <laughs> your bag. So I was almost. I got to be an observer right? Very interested <clears throat> observer. But uh, <laughs> if I had to bet and just reading your your uh, body language that 
that night. It was it was late at night, and it seemed like such a dire situation. And anyone who was reading body language would say, "Well, this will never work out." Denver seems to just <laughs> want to just burn the place down. Like this will never work. And uh, what I remember about that is I, I was actually convinced. Well, it's not coming up, and it, it's not gonna it's not gonna boot. We're not gonna get through this. And frankly. I didn't think that was really uh, something to uh, that. That wasn't a black mark on us. I feel like it was an impossible situation. And, but uh, yeah. you just stuck to it. You just kept going and going yeah. and going. I, I think all IT professionals uh, have been in that situation where, you know, that's, that's one of the things we, uh, just especially back in those days, that's really how why we existed <laughs> for those situations. Uh, we all um, walked into nightmares, and uh, if you wanted to keep your job, you you got through it somehow. So that's we uh, that was probably one of three that day. Seems like <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it being that that sort of a day, but oh my goodness. But I do, I do distinctly remember it, it was a great learning experience for me because um, I, I would have, I, I felt like given the situation, well, it seems hopeless, but I just, I had to observe you just, you just stayed in front of that keyboard and you just kept going and going and you just didn't give up. That was the secret. You just didn't stop. You didn't quit. And One thing you do realize is there's always, almost always an answer and you just have to find it. It's, you know, you do a little bit of research, you know, Google didn't exist then, but um, there were other tools that you, that we could use. And uh, there was the phone a friend thing, which I think I did in that case a couple <laughs> of times. And um, there was always, once you, you know, you're in a desperate situation that opens up the playbook a little bit too, because it's, well, it's better to make it live, you know, take a few chances and make it live, which is always a little bit scary, but um, it was, I, I really felt like we would get through it. What my biggest concern at the time was, will we get through it by the time the staff comes in in the morning? And if I recall, we barely made that. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. Yeah. It, it really felt miraculous. And, my recollection is I, I remember thinking as we were basically leaving and everything was okay. I, I just thought if only they knew, <laughs> if only they could see, because they, yeah. am I remembering correctly? They weren't even there, right? It was just the two of yeah. us in the building. That's right. They let, they let us in the building and right. it's, it's like being in a foxhole, you know? Yeah. I don't think they expected us to be there the, the next morning. I, <laughs> I don't think they knew how big of a problem they had on their hands. Um, and then once we got it up and running, as is often the case, now it's just hope that it stays running until we can actually do a troubleshooting to see why this happened, how we prevent it from happening the next time it goes down, that sort of thing. And, you know, once we once we realized that the IT guy had had installed all that garbage software on there, then it became a little more clear that okay, so this is this is his doing, and we can undo it. And so it just we had to just dig through uh, that operating system and find all the garbage. So yeah, um, but we were, you know, because we didn't build the environment, we didn't really have anybody to introduce us to the environment. We were still a little jittery about that for a while, if I recall, uh, until we were able to actually do some upgrades and so forth. And so we, we actually got to know the, uh, the whole network. Yeah. So they, uh, so they did, they did hire us. They, they, they became a client of ours and still, yeah. still are to this day. That was over 20 years ago. Yeah. Something uh, yeah, like that's that? probably, uh, 23 years ago, 23 years ago. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, it's interesting how those types of experiences, they stay with you and they have this way. I think it, I, maybe it's like anything else. You, you gain experience and you just kind of learn in the next situation that seems dire. You kind of have that previous situation in the bank account, right? 
Right. I, I, it's just like anything else. You get confidence um, with experience. And, you know, sometimes that confidence can work against you. But um, most of the time, it's a benefit. All the experience you you get over the years and you get to pass it on to others and who can then go off and learn new things and share that with you as well. So it just kind of builds on itself. But um, those scary situations, I think, are what keep you on your toes. For sure. I've wondered, too. Now, now many people will not know. Uh, may, many people who know you may not know that uh, uh, you grew up on a farm and you're still active in the family farm. That's one of my great joys. Is uh, you, The Abernathy family has uh, let me tag along for many adventures on the farm. But I've always wondered. I feel like. Uh, when I'm at the farm with you, I see so many parallels to that day. There are situations where it's something breaks, something doesn't go right. We don't have a part we need. And the answer is never quit. You know, that's just, ne that's never an option. It's, it's just sit there and grind it out and find a way. <laughs> Do you feel like in hindsight, your, your upbringing and that environment kind of preparedly uh, prepared you uniquely for it maybe i think uh, and we've we've noticed that with some of our employees as well those people that have that sort of background troubleshooting is just part of their nature at that point so you know especially on a small farm with ancient equipment there aren't parts just floating around and so you sometimes have to create your own parts and you have to, you know, you, you can't go pull the tractor out if it's got a flat tire, even though you didn't go there that day to change a flat tire or to repair a tire. You have to do that before you can do the job that you came to do. And that's just part of, that's kind of what IT is also. You have to lay the groundwork. You have to do the unpleasant job so that you can do the part that you like. You have to recognize that there is always an answer and it's only you who is going to come up with that answer that you can't go to the client and ask them for the answers because that's why they pay you. So, which may be true of other industries as well, but I think it's especially evident in the IT world because troubleshooting is something that we have to do every day. Yes. And uh, for anyone wanting to, to peek inside the uh, secret sauce of Prometheus. It is true really over the years, we kind of, we've had that conversation over and over. We determined that uh, if everything else being equal, we would prefer a, a farm kid. You know, that's kind of a nice background to have for it. Yeah. We um, understand, understand those kids as well. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Heck maybe they can help at the Abernathy farm. That's if we right. really get in a pickle. <laughs> That's right. So get off that <laughs> server and uh, and come and dig dig sweet potatoes with us. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of of employees and, and and reminiscing, one one story that I wanted to dig up, and I'm uh, by the way, you and I, we've done no preparation for this for today's show at all. As a matter of fact, before we went on, Denver said, "What are we talking about?" And I said, "I'm not going to tell you. Let's let's <laughs> just go." So I wanted to reminisce and uh, I'm thinking of a unique employee. And I think this was a turning point uh, for us years and years ago, we were, um, we were hiring a tech. And in those days, you know, the labor market ebbs and flows. Sometimes it's super difficult to find someone. Sometimes we would post an opening and get, uh, you know, 300 resumes, many of which look decent. And I'm thinking of early on, we had an employee who really ended up standing out, but his resume at first glance, you, you, you might say, well, this is, this would be a no, but he, and he ended up being a big yes. And I think you probably know mm -hmm. who I'm thinking of. Maybe we shouldn't name names, but can you remember mm -hmm. the industry he, he came from? what his previous job was. It's very obscure. Maybe you don't remember. I don't remember. I think I know who you're talking about, but I yeah. don't remember. Matter of fact, I think he was our, our first technical hire. Correct. Is that true? I think so. That might be true. 
He was a fly fishing salesman. Oh, that's that's right. You remember that? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. We won't re- or name names, but uh, he was a fly fishing salesman, and I'll never forget. We were we were interviewing him, and speaking of problems, we had a we had a big problem with someone's Microsoft Exchange server that day. Is that, is that right? Or maybe you don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember that, but I, well, I do remember him. I mean, very well, but I don't yeah, yeah. remember. I, I don't I, remember that interview at all. Oh, really? Okay. Well, this is this was this is something I'll never forget because I, I I feel like we kind of lucked into it. This was a learning thing for you and I that we lucked into. My recollection is we had a client who was having a a, a unique problem with Exchange Server. Something wasn't working. And you and I had all these interviews set up and this, this exchange problem had cropped up and really had taken our attention earlier that day. And then it was kind of difficult to focus on these interviews. They, they came into the office and um, <clears throat> in this person's interview, the fly fishing salesman, <laughs> um, somehow you, you had the idea to bring, you just described the problem that we were having with the exchange server and kind of said, what do you think it might be? And, and he actually, he, he thought it through. He had lots of ideas of what it might be. And he ended up telling, and I think one of us, I think it was you at one point, because his idea was better than any of the ideas we had. (laughs) Uh, We were kind of out of ideas. It's like, this is a unique thing. And I think you said to him, how, how would you know this? Especially looking at his resume, there wasn't a real deep IT background. How would you know this? And he says, uh, we are, he says, I set, I set this up at home, like for fun. I had an exchange server that, you know, that was interacting with something else that sounds like that's what your client's doing. And I just kind of noticed this problem crop up. So we learned that this guy loved IT so much that he was he 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 was a mad scientist at home. He was doing this in his free time. That's right, and I, you know he did have some IT background, but he was he had taken a hiatus because if I remember right, he was really interested in getting certified in some things, and that's what he was doing while he was working at the fly fishing fly shop. Fishing. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so yeah, he. Yeah. But I think he he was undervaluing himself because he didn't have those certifications. He didn't think he would be able to get a job mm. without being finished with all the certifications. But yeah. uh, it turned out we were able to help him get some of those. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he was a diamond in the rough for sure. Um, he yeah. was uniquely uh, for where we were as a company, and him being our first technical hire, um, he was perfect. We just lucked into it. Yes. And I feel like in a way that, that actually, um, that dictated a general belief we, you and I have, I think we have speaking of certifications is that in general, you know, where the rubber hits the road is does, does the technician know what they're doing kind of irrespective of, do they have the certification or do they not? Obviously, all other things being equal, we'd like them to have cert- certification. But, you know, at the end of the day, what we really want are competent people. And we're not so worried about the certifications necessarily. Mm-hmm. Can you do it? Right. And we did. One thing we learned there, and we have seen it over and over again, th- those people who, especially young people that are getting into the industry, the ones who do best are the ones who do build their own computer networks at home. They practice and practice and break things and and rebuild things and fix things and troubleshoot things because they have an interest in it. And, you know, now with things that because the world is moving more to the cloud, it's harder for them to come across the hardware and things like that to do that sort of things, which, you know, we've, we had to change what we look for a little bit because it's not reasonable to expect um, folks who have come across a, a half dead server that they could play with on their own. So we, 
But we, a lot of times we'll provide that to some of our young employees and some of them take us up on it and build those things at home. And I think there's really no, uh, in the networking world, there's really no substitute for that kind of learning because uh, you can't practice on on a live network, on somebody else's network. So you have to be able to have the opportunity to to have break things so that you can know that, oh, I can fix it if it's broken. Absolutely. And I think one of the unique things about IT, it, it might, uh, this this might separate IT from most or I don't know, yeah, most other uh, careers. I do think that there's such a low barrier to entry. You know, people uh, don't, uh, many people don't understand. Yes. Yeah, set up, set up your own network at home, you know, go to, <laughs> go to garage sales and pick up some old, some old equipment. You know, you can't, you can do it. Um, and of course now with the advent of YouTube, I mean, my goodness, is there anything that people can't educate themselves on? I, I, I realize that's not necessarily hands-on, but it's, I think, hugely powerful, a big helper in, in, uh, in developing a hands-on approach. Yeah. And, you know, eBay is a good resource for old retired equipment that's still, that will still run. So, you know, there are times we have to go out and find that equipment. If we have legacy equipment that, you know, has been sitting in an office for a decade or more, and then it, the hardware dies and, we have to go out and find new equipment. That's where we'll go. And you can find it pretty cheaply. Um, don't expect much out of it, but it will. it's a good start for if you're trying to break fix things. Now, speaking of reminiscing, I got to thinking in, in preparing for this show that um, I believe something in IT has changed. One of the cultural parts of working in IT. Do you remember the days? I think you and I both both disliked these days. Do you remember the days when IT guys felt like they could dress like Spicoli from Fast Times at Ridgemont High? They just there. There's just no no dress code. And I think there it was just uh, arrogance, right? Well, what are you going to do? Fire me? I, I, you, you can't. I'm the IT guy. You, it feels like that has changed. Uh, it's changed. It's not everywhere. Uh, I think part of it is, it's kind of like a cultural thing as well. So you notice if you hire artists, uh, they also have that sort of, you know, slightly different mode of dress and they feel like that's part of the uh the persona and so you have to adopt it well it was particularly uh, you know the kind of messy look and definitely the casual uber casual look and yeah that, i think we're past the ripped jeans deal i, I don't i hope we are anyway but yeah, it was for a while. It was kind of the Wild West. And people did put up with it for a while because they were IT and it's like, well, that's who they are. So we have to let them be that. Um, I think I think uh, employers are mostly beyond that as well. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, I feel like that. I was used to bother us a little bit. <laughs> um, I, I can remember, uh, you know, as young as young consultants, you know, you know, we would have to deal with sometimes people didn't want to take our advice necessarily. And we were just kind of racking our brains in the early days. You know, we, we know we're giving good advice here. Why are they, why are they not heeding our, our advice? And uh, I, I remember deciding, all right, we're going to go out and buy suits. We're going to go the other way. And I feel like it, it actually really worked. They people kind of took us more seriously. And, yeah, uh, that, it, it took us out of that IT technician role, put us more on the consultant role. Um, yeah, where you know, I think people didn't realize they needed the consulting part of IT. 
they wanted to stick you in a closet and <laughs> and close that door and have you come out when it's fixed and that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, IT used to be a lot smaller of a feel as well. You know, we had we had our role in the company and it was it was very limited. Um, computers were one thing and everything else was another. And over time, the entire office workings became IT. And so we kind of rode that wave where suddenly we're we're involved in all all the decisions that the company is making for a while um, because everything has to touch IT. So uh, and that's where where we are today, I think in some ways the the attitudes of management has some have gone the other way a little bit of they sometimes tend to leave IT out of it again, uh, which is never a good thing uh, because it is a big part of budgets today. Uh, so IT really should always be involved in those major decisions. Yeah, I think there are times when uh, uh, non-technical people just maybe don't understand that you know, something they're, they're considering or pondering r- really needs to include an IT expert, just, just, you know, just in case. So I think, I think some of it is, or much of it maybe is, um, it's just oversight. They just don't realize. Right. I, th- I think it's, it's, it's not something that comes naturally to think, well, we're going to, we've got a, half a million dollar budget for a project that's not necessarily IT related, but so a lot of times people don't think to include the IT people in it, even though there's the underlying almost all of those expenditures is a layer of IT, whether it's, you know, cloud computing or, you know, some sort of website that has to be developed for it. If it's marketing, you know, usually there's IT involved and, most market digital marketing these days. So uh, IT always gets involved, but a lot of times they're left out of the planning process. Yes, it, it really has grown and changed. And I, th- I think uh, when we do a future show, Denver, pr- probably we can, uh, I mean, we could spend a whole show talking about security. Uh, it's such It's such a hot topic these days. So we don't necessarily um, need to get take a deep dive today, but I'm just curious just to pick your brain a little bit as we're early in 2024 here. And as I said, we all know security is such a hot topic is in, in your opinion, is is there maybe an emerging security threat that people might not be um, thinking about too much that uh, you think maybe they need to start educating themselves on what's coming down the pike in security? Well, I never really know what's coming down the pike, I guess. I think I know where things have been and uh, what we have seen recently. Um, We've seen a lot of email hijacks, uh, session hijacks with computers. So people are, hackers are getting around multi-factor authentication using session hijacks. And once they've hacked email accounts, then they're, starting to use that email to exploit clients and other staff members, things like that. So uh, the simple thing that we've been saying is always get voice authorization. If if somebody asks you, for instance, uh, to change ACH information for payment or to set up an ACH uh, payment account, always get verbal approval from the person asking. So whether that's your boss that's asked you to make the change and the and the payment, or what we've seen a lot of times is the vendor appears to be asking for that. Um, and if that's the case, just always get verbal approval. And keep in mind that, and it may even be this year, we don't know, AI is changing things. The They're starting to be able to clone voices and so forth. So... Uh, we're probably going to need to be coming up with some secure words and things like that. Um, in the meantime, if possible, uh, get the approval face to face, those sorts of things. So 
whatever you can do uh, internally for your procedures to make sure that you don't make a mistake, because once those payments go out the door, there's no retrieving them. So you, um, you know, you want to make sure you have your insurance in place, your cyber insurance. Um, I've talked to quite a few people recently who have said, uh, what is that? Uh, <laughs> cyber insurance. Cyber insurance is something that most companies need. It helps in the case of things like ransomware attacks. Um, if there are any costs incurred, if there are lawsuits as a result of a ransomware attack, those sorts of things, you really need that insurance. So if you have any questions about it, you know, obviously ask us or your insurance people, but um, make sure that that's part of your budget. Very good. Very good. Well, as I said, I, I, surely a future episode, we could we could do an entire episode on on security. You're a wealth of knowledge and uh, and it's a big, scary topic, so it's much needed. But um, it's fun. My gosh, 25 years. It's fun to just take a little little uh, trip down memory lane. It's amazing, yeah. given time, uh, how you can progress, you know. Prometheus has really yeah. come a long way. Yeah, we're uh, we're very different than we were 25 years ago. Um, still doing a lot of the same things, but it, it all works differently. And um, and we're bigger, obviously, and we have more people working for us. And so our roles have certainly changed. So it feels it feels very different than it did days of spending all night in a server room trying to get a server running again um don't have many of those these days but uh different worries obviously uh but yeah the environment has changed a lot thankfully yes it has well denver thank you so much good to visit with you and uh i'll probably you know, talk to you within the next hour or so <laughs> probably so thanks tony okay all right we'll see you next time bye-bye